Last week, we spoke about food palatability, which demonstrates that a food's taste correlates directly with whether we should eat it or not. A food that has a high natural palatability, such as a ribeye steak, is an obvious choice over a stalk of celery. That's our perspective from nature. When you delve deeper into the logical procurement, as well as the scientific nutritional analysis, everything pieces together. From that, we have perceived animal foods as the basis of nutrition for our diet for the most part. Wild quality foods in general are required to achieve satiation. Animal fat, protein, and organs provide the majority of nutrition, and although plant foods aren't necessary for most of the time, they do provide vitamin C, certain minerals like magnesium and copper, and carbohydrates do nourish our gut microbiome. But this doesn't really answer the question of how much food we should eat, and correspondingly, what amount of specific foods we need to eat. Calories as well as macronutrients. Of course, our ancestors never worried about this. They were simply trying to survive in some cases and relied on their natural hunger instincts when they did have food on hand. Before we talk about the order of satiety, I want to emphasize three points. One is that our ancestors were in the sun, in nature most of the day. Therefore, their vitamin D3 status exceeds ours greatly. This is relevant to nutrient synergy as vitamin B3 is antagonistic and synergistic with certain fat soluble vitamins, more importantly vitamin A. So when we consume a high animal foods diet but don't get any sun, like our ancestors did, we may run into issues. Two is that past tribes, natives, people, indigenous civilizations of all sorts were free of modern Wi-Fi, various unnatural frequencies, these cause oxidative stress as well as disrupt our gut bacteria. That combined with our now sedentary lifestyles, a lack of gut motility is a recipe for poor microbiome status, gut bacterial imbalance, AKA dysbiosis, which means we don't synthesize as much of certain nutrients such as vitamin K2 or biotin as those are made specifically by our gut bacteria. Three is that past humans ate wild quality food. Although some animal foods we have access to now come close to wild quality, the plant foods do not. And then we have corresponding nutrient deficiencies, especially minerals like magnesium and copper, as well as other elements. The order of satiety, also the order of satiation, is how our biological hunger signal relates to our current nutrient status. This is regulated by two things, uh, to my understanding, our cell nutrient status and our gut bacteria. If you're lacking vitamins or minerals, fatty acids, your body will crave them. Also, if you have certain gut bacteria or fungus, they will crave certain nutrients as well. You know, imagine the bacteria is dying off, screaming, give us sugar, feed us, we need starch, or the gut bacteria is gonna die, and that's gonna compromise your overall well-being. This means that our ancestors might have been able to follow their natural cravings and instincts, but certain modern factors, such as the gut dysbiosis, as well as current food access, has made it so we have to think a little bit more. So our bodies will crave a variety of nutrients and macronutrients. In our modern world, where we have a caloric excess and lack of vitamins, minerals, and fatty acids, people are simply gorging themselves on empty calories to no avail. As that McDonald's cheeseburger they're eating has been engineered to taste good without actually having the nutritional properties it's supposed to. A good example of this is a tribesman versus an American, the natural, healthy, almost perfect human being of that indigenous person versus the McDonald's slob, you know, sloppy crap all over the place uh, American dieter. <laughs> but since we know we shouldn't be eating a McDonald's cheeseburger, it's pretty easy to understand what possible cravings we could have when we only isolate our diet to natural foods. So the three macronutrients, fat, carbohydrates, and protein, as well as the various water-soluble vitamins and minerals are what our bodies could possibly crave. And if we look back to the macronutrient ratios these indigenous tribes were consuming, it always ends up being about 80% from energy or fat and carbohydrates and 20% from protein. Interestingly, both the tribesmen and the American ate similar macronutrient ratios in their diets. However, one is the epitome of health and the other is the opposite. Uh, so since carbohydrates aren't naturally accessible across all groups, 
but animal fat is, it makes more sense to choose fat for the energy source initially. So the simple way to figure out how much to eat is a meal test. Isolate a lean source of protein as well as a pure source of fat, basically replicating what our ancestors would have come across in the wild after hunting, after being hungry. So when you eat that pure fat as we would have in nature, then you move on to the protein till satiation. You can do this several times, record how much you eat, and you'll have a rough idea of what your body needs at that point in time. Of course, there are many factors. You know, what type of protein and fat are you eating? Is it raw or cooked? Did you season them? Is it wild quality? Ideally, you do this test with something like raw grass-fed beef fat and a raw ribeye steak, as that is pretty much minimal base palatability of the food as it would have occurred in nature, and processing it any further than that will increase its flavor, therefore altering how much of it you would naturally eat. And not even raw per se, just don't over season or put too much salt on the meat. Also keep in mind that you should not be eating until you're full, just satiated. When you consume that pure fat, whether it's raw beef fat or butter, you know, imagine how many bites you're gonna get into a stick of butter. You'll actually get a slight feeling of nausea, but not fullness. I call that, you know, the fat craving threshold. Well, I just made that up on the spot, but the point is, if you eat fat and only fat, after a couple bites, you know, five, six, seven, eight hundred calories, you will become nauseous because your body can only process so much fat at once, but your stomach is nowhere near close to full because fat is very small and calorically dense. So then you would move on to protein, which you should still be able to consume as your body's hunger for fat has been met, but not protein. This is the difference between eating, you know, three to four pounds of grain-fed feedlot steak per day versus one and a half pounds of steak and a third of a pound of fat. You know, most people are overeating protein compared to fat or carbohydrates, and that has to do with several factors. You're getting the macronutrients correct, the fat to protein ratio, and the micronutrient content of the steak, the available B vitamins, minerals, and the grass-fed option is much greater. You know, so would you rather poison yourself with four pounds of feedlot beef or eat a normal amount of food? And that's just one element of figuring out how much we should eat. The next has to do with those specific nutrients, the vitamins, minerals, and fatty acids. The problem with specific nutrient cravings is that they're hard to identify and will result in overeating a food you might not need. You know, I was deficient in copper for months and months, yet my body never really craved a high copper food. And sometimes people will crave chocolate when they're deficient in magnesium, but that's not going to address a vitamin D deficiency. You're not gonna crave sunlight. Once we know what foods are high in certain nutrients and what deficiencies are typical to our modern lifestyles, it becomes easily to supplement and focus on certain foods initially. You know, so over the first few months of changing your diet, when you're incorporating more quality animal foods, supplementing certain things, you're able to overcome the majority of those deficiencies. Higher nutrient foods like liver, salmon roe, bone marrow tend to be heavily satiating due to their nutrient content. You know, if you start taking salmon or by the spoonful, just like the butter, you're only gonna get a few tablespoons in before you're like, okay, I can't eat anymore. It can help to incorporate these foods at the start of a meal before consuming fat or protein, and that will help you get to a more natural hunger pattern as that's what our ancestors would have done. They prized certain parts of the animal for the higher vitamin content as well as caloric content. And it makes sense that a higher nutrient food and a higher fat food would satiate you more from a survival perspective. So let's summarize the order of satiety. Fat and nutrients are priority for survival. And one thing I didn't mention was fermented foods. Fermented foods are present across all indigenous groups. Where that ties into cravings is probably, you know, the micronutrient cravings where you're gonna want specifically like vitamin K2 or biotin that might be higher in a fermented food. And carbohydrates are here because they can feed the gut bacteria. Although, if you were only eating carbohydrates, you would eventually starve to death, they're still in that energy category. Protein is secondary, not a priority for survival, but still necessary. And then anytime a sweet product, like a fruit, modern dessert comes along, we lose the hunger signal. Once you add that element of sweet, sugar, there's no off switch in our bodies because 
Humans are designed to gorge on sugar for survival, as it was very rare in nature. It's no coincidence there's a saying, there is always room for dessert, because there truly is. Another thing to note is that a bodybuilder or someone with more muscle will alter this ratio of 80% energy to 20% protein, so keep that in mind. And it's not always spot on for most people. You know, you might feel better with more protein, especially initially in your health exploration when you're probably deficient in B vitamins. And, you know, fat soluble vitamins like vitamin A, it's not really a priority for most people. Usually they need vitamin D, vitamin K2, minerals, and stuff like that. So thank you guys for joining me today. Hopefully this gives you some tips in how to structure your meal, how to structure your diet, how to use those natural wild quality foods in a practical application. If you guys would like to support me, of course, just like the video, leave me a comment. Above all, if you guys could share the video, and if you do want to support me further, you know how to do so down in the description below. Thanks again for joining me, guys. I'll see you for tomorrow's video.